Hi guys, uh, this short video is intended to give you an overview of the topics that we're going to study in class as well as a real brief overview of how the AP exam will work. We'll be doing that throughout the year, taking uh, tests and you will be doing um, FRQs as well. We'll get into that in a second. One thing you'll find about this class is that it's very multidisciplinary. You're not only studying the different branches of science, including chemistry, biology, some physics, uh, geology. It also incorporates history, government, economics, um, the human health part, so the microbiology part, um, and then general social studies. So just some images of things that we'll be looking at during the year, pollution, more pollution, population growth, nuclear disasters, water cycles and other biogeochemical cycles, energy, fisheries um, and energy conversions, food webs, ecosystems, rock cycles. All right, so the goal of AP Environmental Science is to provide you with the principles, concepts, and methodologies required to understand the inter interrelationships of the natural world, to identify and, anal and analyze environmental problems, both natural and man human-made, which is also anthropogenic, to evaluate the relative risks associated with these problems and to examine alternative solutions for resolving or preventing them. So again, one question you're never going to have to ask me is, what does this course or what does this topic have to do with the real world? Everything we study in this course has an effect on you and the human population and the earth every day. So here are the five big ideas of uh, AP Environmental, and I'll let you read those. So what are we going to actually study in this course? One of the main themes in APES is sustainability. How can we use and enjoy the resources of the earth and the environment without degrading the environment? So one of the first assignments that you will have in this class is to calculate your ecological footprint. What are you doing to the earth? How are you treating and affecting the environment? We'll look at biogeochemical cycles, ecosystems, population, um, designing an experiment, laws of matter and energy. I won't list these, but you can read these on the list here. Hopefully you're still reading. And I'm hoping that some of these topics are things that interest you. I'm hoping that you signed up for the class because you were interested in what's going on in the environment, how people are affecting it, and how we can solve this. Because it's, it's your generation that is really going to be in charge of trying to fix some of these environmental issues that we have. So why would you take this course? It's real world, like I just said. It doesn't focus on one area of science. So it's not like, you know, AP Bio, which is all bio, and Chem 2, which is all chemistry, physics B and C, it's all physics. You know, we integrate a lot of the, the um, content from those courses, well, basic ideas at least, and then plus other courses as well. All right. As far as the AP exam goes, and again, I'll be when I get back to class, I'll be doing this a lot more um, in detail. Before this past year, the last two years, I had had the highest pass rate in the district, which was really great. Um, especially if you look at 2013, 67 percent, and the average for the district that year was, I think, 40 percent. 
um, there was one campus that had an 11 percent pass rate so I was really proud of that and then last year it dropped 20 percent um, we can go into that with more detail but a big part of it were students not willing to do their part students not studying for the AP exam not studying for regular exams and not watching the videos the lecture videos on YouTube because like I said in the intro video the lectures that I do in class are not going to be nearly as detailed as the ones that I have already done for YouTube and because they chose not to do their part I didn't even have half pass this past year and I was actually very disappointed um, and so that's something that you need to think about that if you are going to sign up to take that this AP exam on May 5th you need to dedicate yourself you need to get a study guidebook you need to be taking your notes on the chapters and you need to be studying for the exams just studying the night before an AP exam is not good enough what you need to understand is that it is a college level final exam it's intended to be hard it's supposed to because it's a college exam all right, the format of the AP exam is you have two parts. The first part is the multiple choice part, and that is 100 multiple choice questions to be answered in 90 minutes. Only 90 of the questions are counted because 10 are field test items, and you will never know which 10 are not going to be counted. You will not be allowed to use calculators on any part of the AP exam. Therefore, in class, you will not be able to use calculators on exams. And in any math assignment that you have in this course, you need to show all of your work. And you do get penalized for not showing your work, even if you could do it in your head because you need to get into practice mode for the AP exam. What changed either a year or two years ago was guessing. They used to penalize you for having the wrong answer. They no longer do that. So yes, do your best guess some questions are, are designed to be very difficult and um, there are some math problems that would take 10 minutes to do one and they design it that way to see who is actually going to take the time to sit there and do it knowing you have not even one minute per question so on those that look really difficult either guess or skip it and go back to it later so what is on the AP exam what I want you to look at are the percentages here. Um, we do earth science 10 to 15 percent of the exam and you can see the the concepts covered there. Um, geology, the atmosphere, water, soil. The living world is another 10 to 15 percent. That's basically ecosystems and energy um, flow like in, you know energy pyramids and food webs and things like that. Um, ecosystem changes, biogeochemical cycles, etc. So ecosystems. Next is population. That's 10 to 15 percent of the multiple choice part as well. This is an area that my students tend to do well above the national average. I'm not really sure why, um, but it's an interesting unit and the kids really like studying about population concepts land and water use is another 10 to 15 percent and you can see there that there's a lot of topics um, involved we talk about agriculture um, forest uh, forestry rangelands um, urban land development which is important here in san antonio because we do have a lot of development going on the types of mining fishing and its impacts and then uh, global economics and how we are affecting the land energy resources and consumption is another 10 to 15 percent and you would think that it would be more um, but I think it actually that percentage is starting to increase a little bit more uh, but this is where we get into our renewable and non-renewable um, energy resources how energy conversions work um, and uh, how to conserve energy which is a big one pollution notice that pollution is 25 to 30 percent of the exam I save um, energy resources pollution global change and ozone 
till the end of the year before the exam because those are the most heavily tested items. So I want those topics to be more fresh in your mind. So pollution is a big one. What types of pollution are there? How do they impact the environment? How do humans um, impact the environment with pollution? And then what are the economic impacts of pollution? And then finally, global change. That's the last unit that we do in this course. That will be in April. And that's when we study the ozone, global warming, and loss of biodiversity. Actually, we cover before that when we um, talk about endangered species. So that part was what's covered on the multiple choice. For the second part of the exam is the FRQ. This is all your essays. You have four FRQs, free response questions, and you have 90 minutes to answer those. One is always a math-based question. One is always a DBQ, which is data-based question. And then the other two questions could be about anything. When you get to the math question, and you will be, uh, let me say that, for most exams in this class, you will have an FRQ on each test. You'll have one to answer. Um, if you are given a math part, always do the non-math parts first. So for one question, there will be four or five different parts, A through D or E. Not every part on a math question is actual math. So you want to do the non-math parts first. So you at least get some points there. Then you can do the actual math calculations last. You always want to show work or you're not going to get any credit always because the main important thing there is that if you set it up correctly but maybe you did the calculations wrong because you don't have a calculator you can still get partial credit. The data-based question is that they give you an article to read and then you can answer some questions based on that article and the other two questions like I said could really be about anything. The last couple of years the head writer or one of the head writers was a climatologist and so there have been questions about uh, global warming and ozone. So who is it designed for? For students interested in the human impacts on the environment, the preservation of the earth and its ecosystems through sustainable resource management and development. So we're not only looking at the issues but we're looking at ways to ameliorate those issues, a way to fix it. And that's kind of what I like and I think the students really like about this course is really um, trying to figure out ways of, of saving the earth, of going green. And, and you'll become very knowledgeable in that by the end of the course. Okay, so this was a brief introduction to the topics. Again, think about it if this is the right course for you. Um, it's, you know, it is an easy course in the sense of the ideas, but the tests are difficult and they are designed to be difficult because you have to critically think about those ideas, not just be able to regurgitate a vocabulary definition. You know, the, the test makers know you can memorize a definition, but can you apply the concepts? Um, so I hope that helps you understand what this course is about and can't wait to get started.